In every area of combat, it's vital to have the best equipment for the job. This can not only give you a decisive advantage, it can often make the difference between success and failure. Nowhere is this more important than in one of the greatest fights of all, the fight against fire. For although all fires may look more or less the same, there's a very real difference in the ways they occur, the ways they grow, the ways they spread, and the ways in which they must be fought. Choosing the wrong weapon in this fight will not only be ineffective, it may even give strength to the very enemy you're fighting. It could even prove fatal. So it's vital that you're able to recognize the different types of fire and know the best weapons to fight them with. Ideally, this knowledge should be gained on a practical training course, where you have the chance to tackle controlled fires and learn to use firefighting equipment under professional guidance. But even where this isn't possible, there are still some basic facts everyone can learn, starting with fire itself. Fire, every fire, is the result of a three-way process. It can only occur when fuel, heat and oxygen come together. Remove any one of these three ingredients and the fire simply cannot survive. As you'll see, different types of extinguisher tackle the fire triangle in different ways. By cooling, starving the fire of oxygen, cutting off the fuel supply, or by a chemical change. All have their own strengths and advantages. That's why you should take every opportunity to familiarize yourself with the ones in your workplace, so that you'll know in advance exactly what they're for and how they're to be used. You happy with that? You can make drawings of that if you like. For when it comes to their selection in an emergency, you should take your cue from the information that they carry and from the kind of fire you're faced with. The different colors of the fire Within the home and workplace, fires fall into four basic categories. There's the Class A fire, this sort of thing, that can happen when freely burning materials, such things as wood, paper or fabric, catch fire. These can be tackled with water using a hose or extinguisher to apply a steady, sustained stream at the base of the flames. Used correctly, as here, it will cool the fuel material, causing the fire to go out. Water-based extinguishers are colored red, and this is how they should be used against a fire. Class B fires involve flammable liquids and demand a different approach. The aim here is to cool the material and to cut off the oxygen supply. We've already seen that using water would simply add to the spread of the flames. So for liquid fires, the Class B fires caused by paints, fuels, oils, greases or solvents, these cream-coloured foam extinguishers are the best option. When using a foam extinguisher, you should always try to move in as close as you can, without putting yourself at risk. Working from the back edge of the fire, allow the foam to spread gently over the surface until it's sealed. Foam works by floating in on the surface of the fuel, cooling as well as cutting off the oxygen in the process. The AFFF foam, or spray lance extinguisher, is an even more versatile weapon in the fight against fire, with a superb all-round effectiveness that makes it a valuable alternative to water for Class A, as well as Class B fires. The lance can be used to aim and direct the foam into particular corners and angles, floating the foam into every nook and cranny. For fires over larger areas, and particularly spillage fires, powder extinguishers are another answer. Easily recognized by their blue color, powder extinguishers provide rapid knockdown, together with a range and density of spread that rapidly smother a fire. Spray the whole fire area in a steady sequence to take out the flames area by area. So for flammable liquid fires, remember foam extinguishers are colored cream and powder extinguishers are blue. A powder extinguisher is the best weapon against the third type of fire, the flammable gas or Class C fire. 
the flames are best tackled with a smooth, effective action. It's vital that priority is given to turning off the gas supply as soon as possible to minimize the risk of reignition. So for flammable gas, a powder extinguisher is best. The electrical fire brings dangers all of its own. Once it gains a hold, this type of fire can travel quickly through a wiring system and can spread throughout the building. Water will have little effect and indeed will make the situation worse because the water will conduct the electricity causing a risk of electric shock. So first, locate and turn off the power source. Then, for major electrical fires involving machinery or processing plant, halon extinguishers are the answer. Halon extinguishers are coloured green. For more localised outbreaks, or where electronics are involved, CO2 extinguishers, coloured black, are the answer. When using them yourself, by the way, remember that these are high-powered extinguishers and they pack quite a punch. So hold them firmly and aim them to direct a stream of gas against the source of the fire. Remember to keep your hands well clear of the horn itself. The CO2 gas is very cold and could produce a cold burn similar to frostbite. For electrical fires, therefore, use halon or CO2. Halon extinguishers are also a useful weapon for fighting fires arising in mechanical systems and as such are ideal for vehicle or engine fires. Class A, freely burning material. Class B, flammable liquid. Class C, flammable gas. Electrical fires and vehicle fires. For each one a special weapon exists designed by Chubb as a result of more than a century of experience in the fight against fire. And as you've seen, many of them are suitable for multi-purpose use, as well as the speciality for which they were first designed. Properly installed and maintained, they're a vital first-line defence against fires in the home or the workplace. And in an emergency, they're easy and reliable to use. All you have to do is seize and squeeze for a fast and effective trigger-operated controllable discharge. Simply remove from their bracket, hold securely, remove the safety pin, aim and squeeze the lever. If used properly and appropriately, these extinguishers will deal with most small fires in a matter of seconds. And whenever an extinguisher has been discharged, a used symbol appears automatically to indicate that refilling or recharging is required. For greater capacity, trolley-mounted extinguishers are available. They're often recommended for high-risk areas, such as aircraft hangars or fuel stores. These are mobile, self-contained units, larger forms of the basic foam, powder, CO2 or halon extinguishers. Make sure that you know exactly how your units work. That way you'll be well prepared should an emergency occur. Hose reels are standard items of firefighting equipment in many premises. To use these correctly and safely, first open the valve, then extend the hose as far as necessary. Only then should you open the nozzle, adjusting as required. A direct jet for fast local action aimed straight at the base of the flames or a broader spread for wider cooling, playing carefully over the area until the fire is put out. Other weapons in the fight against fire include these handheld units that can be fitted to a hose reel system. This device, the hose master, when fitted to a standard hose reel, converts the water into a stream of foam and a highly effective weapon against class A and class B fires, offering far greater capacity than a standard self-contained extinguisher. With a working knowledge of these weapons, ideally acquired in a special training session under the guidance of qualified experts, everyone can make a valuable contribution to safety in the workplace. And the third one. So remember, if you're faced with a fire, sound the alarm and summon help. Then use your knowledge to choose the best weapon for the job. Hose reel, trolley unit or extinguisher, water, foam, powder, halon or CO2. That way 
you'll be helping to beat your foe, not adding to his advantage. <laughs>